Right, so we're coming up to the 25th of April here in New Zealand, which is the National Remembrance Day of all the Australian and New Zealand fallen soldiers and service people. On Remembrance Day, we all wear uh, bright red poppies. So every year, I like to make a set of bright red poppies. These are made out of steel and hand folded. This is a bit of a head nod to my roots. This was the first ever commission I ever got in making artwork years and years ago while I was still at school. And it's pretty much what set me on the path of wanting to start up my own business making artwork. So it's quite close to home here for both being Anzac Day as well as this is one of my first ever pieces that I, you know, sold. Anyway, let's uh, crack on with it. Look at that. Looks fantastic. Let's uh, run out another 15, I guess. Woo! Right, so we'll get up the 15 blanks now. I do like to run a pinch too hot that gives you just a bit of slow speed dross. It's not bad. You hit it with the wire wheel, come straight off. I like to do two processes. I hit it with the wire wheel like this. That does all the edges. With the uh, bigger diameter, it really does knock those edges off just fantastically. And then we come in with this uh, one to do all the surfaces. And uh, yeah, then we can go inside and we can start looking at how we make these into actual poppies, I guess, rather than just a 2D blank. All right. On with it, I guess. Right, we're gonna add a little bit of spice here. We're gonna punch them with uh, numbering from obviously one to 15. Not like they need any more customization. Uh, they're all gonna be hand folded differently, but uh, why not? Just a little bit of extra, you know? Right, so now we're going to do the forming. I like to do the main bit on the sandbag with a rubber headed hammer. You've obviously got other hammers you can use, but the hammer that comes with the sandbag is too hard, leaves a bit of scalloping. So rubber headed hammer is what I like to use. You want to form like a nice bowl shape. Then you want to create a bit of overlapping and then curling of the edges of the pedals. Now I like to do that in the vise with a plank of quiller just to clamp in there. Just gives you like a hard edge that won't leave any machine marks and so you can just get that nice curving edge. Then we come back and then we co go over with the pliers. Now the pliers do just the little curling edges and then all these little tears and feely edges. And honestly, this last little thing is what brings these completely to life. At least in my opinion, it turns them into quite beautiful things uh, from just little plates of steel. Right, let's uh, crack on with it. Mangled, but we're getting those nice edges, so back to the uh, sandbag. Right, there you go. There's one poppy. Now obviously we've got a whole bunch more work to do. Then once we've got the pile all done, then I like to go back through with the pliers and just fine tweak everything. I usually start uh, getting a bit of a pattern that I want to do with each bunch. And so this 15, I might want them to be really all tight or really quite relaxed and fresh and new. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a day or two when I've folded the rest of them. Alright, I guess I'll uh, struggle on. We're just cutting up the rods that hold the poppies off the ground. So I like to go for about a metre long. You usually stick it in the ground to 300 mil, and then with the top edge bent over at 45, you end up with about a 600 mil high poppy. This gets it right out of the garden, so it's still very visible, but it's still it's uh, short enough that it retains enough rigidity so they don't uh, knock each other or anything while it's windy. So keeping that in mind, we will cut these up and uh, bend them and get ready for welding, I guess. Right, so we're about to weld up the poppies. We've got to weld in our centerpiece here. Just a center ridge line with a bunch of little spot welds. That is what builds up like the seed pods or the center of the poppy. Honestly, it looks so nice when you do it, but when you weld it, it looks a bit rough. We want the welder nice and cold so we can build up the proper thick 
ridge line that we want. If you weld hot, then you're just gonna blow through the thin, thin-ish sheet, uh, or just get like a really wide puddle when you're trying to create a really narrow puddle. This isn't a structural weld at all. This is all aesthetics. Keeping that in mind, let's press on. Right, so we've got the poppies all looking good. We've now got to clean the back up, so we're just going to smack that down with the wire, uh, flap disc and then a wire wheel just to blend it out before we weld the rod on. Obviously, if we've got the rod on, then we're not going to be able to do this, so something to do now. We're going to weld the stainless rods to the back of the poppies, and that's it for welding. Now, obviously, this is stainless steel and this is mild steel. So welding these two together isn't actually ideal, but it's okay. This isn't a structural piece. This is art as well as I can just, I'll crank the heat up and it'll be, it'll be a plenty strong enough weld. Obviously the weld and a little bit back on the stainless will corrode because the metallurgy's changed. That's okay. I'll be painting back anyway down the rod a little bit just so there is no chance of corrosion at all. And uh, yeah, hope that's enough of an explanation of what I'm doing. I'm just joining everything together, I guess. Imagine that, just... Imagine connecting this up to like the... Arc welder, and having this the negative and this is like the positive, and then, you know... There's an idea to test out, isn't it? Right, let's crack on. We've got the pile of poppies, they're looking fantastic. We now need to go around with the wire wheel, clean off all splatter, slag, uh, anything, and then make sure there's not a single speck of rust. Then we can start putting a bit of colour on these, and whoo! Boy, they'll start looking pretty beautiful! Right, so I've got the puppy set up in a painting booth. It's just a gazebo. I could have them in the shed, but I know I'd get dust on them, metal dust or any dust, and it would ruin the paint job. So I'm trying to get the highest quality paint job I can, and so I've removed all those external factors and got them in a, a paint booth. Now, obviously being in a paint booth, it's quite a confined space, so I've got my industrial fan here. That's why I use in the shed when I'm moving air when I'm plasma cutting, just so there's no uh, toxic fumes, etc. in the shed. So. I'll have that in here to give myself ventilation. Obviously, I'll have a respirator on with the correct filters for epoxy paint. Unfortunately, this also means that you won't be able to beam here. I don't particularly want a grey camera, so for now, I shall continue, and uh, I guess you'll see the result of these. Nevertheless, on with it. Right, so last time you saw me, I was all chipper, and painting all these poppies in the gazebo, and uh, yeah. Shortly after finishing painting, the gazebo blew down, and ruined them all. So, stripped them back and then had to repaint them all. Now I'm really happy with how they look. The top coat, the t got two top coats on them and they're looking yeah, pretty fresh. If I've got to, got to admit, looking pretty good. So, pretty happy there. Obviously the last thing we've got to do is paint the centre black. Poppy has got black seeds uh, with red petals, so just go do that and uh, they'll be finished. So I'm really happy with how they're looking and I'll be really happy once the black's done because I know it's really what does that last little bit that transforms them uh, into you know, a bit more realism. So, cool. Let's uh, crack on. And uh, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm so funny, he looks like an orange road cone, or wow, I can't see him because he's wearing orange camo. Yes, you're so funny. I haven't heard that joke countless times. Anyway, so press on. Right, got the poppy, got ourselves a black epoxy. I'm aware my head is in the way, I apologise. Right, look at that. Beautiful. Just make sure you don't have any drip drops. You should be good. No, I've made it worse. Yeah, don't do don't do that. That's a wall. Right. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, 14 more to go.
Right, so when it comes to placing the poppies in the ground, there's actually a few things you need to consider. One is that there's enough space between the poppies. If not, they do move in the wind and they will knock into each other and chip the paint. You don't want that, obviously, because that will compromise the protective layer and they could rust. So making sure you've done enough of a gap, hold them by the base and press them firmly into the soil. Obviously, you want to be pushing most of the way through the bottom hand hold. If you press by the top, you will buckle them. The other thing to consider is how far you press it into the ground. 200 to 300 mils is obviously plenty fine in my experience. The further you go in, the more rigid and less movement you'll get, so the less natural, but that might be the look you're going for. Now, obviously, with a 700 mil long rod, it's a bit of an open canvas. Lop them short if you want them in the front, or just press them further into the ground, or have them at the back of the garden so you can see them over all of your flowers or plants. So, with all that said, let's jump inside and I'll uh, give you a wee debrief. Right. Man, I'm happy with how these look. The large and the small are really what I had already envisioned at the start. I'm a little bit biased because I've poured my soul into making these, but uh, nevertheless, I'm really happy. I will be selling these on my website, which will be linked below. Now, I haven't worked out the pricing at all yet, but I do know at least $5 of every poppy sold will be donated to the RSA here in New Zealand. So if you want one, head over to my website, shoot me an email, and uh, we'll work it out from there. Now, I haven't got a plan for delivering outside of Wellington, so that's a bit touch and go, but within Wellington region, I'll definitely be uh, delivering them. Now, if you're a welder or a DIY and don't want to buy yourself a finished poppy, but you want to make it yourself, I'm totally happy with running you out blanks or whatever, and uh, yeah, just shoot me an email and we'll work it out from there. Now, apart from that, uh, I hope that was a bit interesting how we snapshot into my business and how I run things here. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your service and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Someone's helping me film in the rain. Yeah. Come on, Nelly Tron. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good girl. Good girl. Okay, come here. Come here.